Good? All right, let's go ahead and get started. Today we're going to talk about Run BMC, a hardware interface for BMCs. Quick intro, I'm Eric Schaub. I'm a hardware technologist at Dropbox. This is my colleague, Jared Mednick, hardware engineer at Salesforce. We're pretty excited to be here. So quick agenda, we're going to talk about, we, we actually presented here last year, 2018 OCP. We're going to give a little bit of history, provide a little bit of context what happened there um, for people that didn't, weren't able to make that talk. We're going to go into the specification. We're not going to dig all the way into the specification, but we're going to cover the mechanical part of the specification. Jerry's going to cover some of the connector overview. And then I'm going to touch base on why we think Run BMC is a great contribution to OCP, why people like this. And I'm going to have a pointer here at the end for the version 1.0 of the contribution. Also leave some time for questions. So what is Run BMC? Run BMC specification defines the interface between a BMC subsystem and the OCP hardware platforms, such as network or compute platforms. <clears throat> and in a nutshell, it's really defining this interface, the connector interface. <clears throat> so to give us some background for those of you who are joining us for the first time, Eric and I got started on this project back at the end of 2017, looking to have Salesforce join OCP and we started by taking some of our time on a 20% project to look closely at the OCP uh, designs that were on the website. And we kind of have a knack for BMCs, so we started to look at that component in particular and dove in with a deep platform analysis, kind of looking at what do you actually see on the BMCs that are being designed on the OCP compute network and other types of platforms. So that drove us to work pretty closely and design a prototype, which Eric has just started handing out, to kind of get the conversation rolling when we gave our talk last year. And we received a lot of feedback from the community kind of showing interest, saying that they had a pain point here. So I'm going to go ahead and recap where the analysis led up to that first initial design. So like I said, we did platform analysis. Here are three of the popular compute platforms at OCP. Of course, this was dated from last year, so there's some new ones that aren't up here. Um, but as you can see here, we have you know, a BMC, usually provided by an SOC, and a lot of the functionality that's being provided is the same. You have RMII and RGMII to provide Ethernet interfaces, some type of boot flash over SPI, NOR, uh, Various IOs are used to toggle devices, et cetera, PCI Express and LPC to talk to the host. And so as we started to do our analysis, we looked closer at the layouts themselves. And what we saw was that while we're providing the same functionality, designers are having to go through and redesign these systems. Here's layout taken from the wedge, the 100 gig switch that was submitted by Facebook. And here's the BMC on the Tioga Pass. I've highlighted the same components, but as you can see, the layout is completely different. The designers have had to pay close attention to redo you know, DDR, voltage regulation, connections to flash, and other various subsystems. Again, I'm having to repeat my layout and provide you the same functionality. So, so we took a closer look at the schematics and built tables and tried to understand how are they using their BMCs? How are they the same? How are they different? What are the requirements that would kind of drive towards having a standard available for all OCP platforms? And so we came up with some of the different types. We have your inputs, outputs, your interrupts, your serial buses, et cetera. And this drove us to say, okay, what in total is needed? And so we developed a first prototype that we presented last year. Here it's shown here. And I have a super high density connector there in the upper left with a super small pitch. And I'm providing exactly that same functionality I've highlighted on our first prototype right here. So this was as far as we got in 2018. And then we continued the conversation. Great recap. You know, let's just touch base on some of the things we did really quick. We, 
we studied a lot of the OCP platforms. We spent maybe three to four months looking at all the OCP, OCP platforms we could get our hands on. It was fun. We were pulling up layout. We were looking at schematics. It, it, was, it was a fun time. And we had about, I think, two months. So we, we really focused on the BMC subsystems, looking at all these designs. And we said, hey, they're all very common. But they're also a little bit different. And if we, we had this brainstorming session, we said, hey, if we make them if we standardize the BMC subsystem, I think we could, there's a big win there. So we had, I think, two or three months to come off a prototype. You know, at, at the end of this table, you see spec. We weren't even thinking about spec. <laughs> we were just trying to help drive the discussion forward, and we thought a good idea to help drive the discussion forward was to actually deliver some real hardware so that people could see. <clears throat> and let's fast forward to 2019, a lot of things happened. A lot of, after the OCP 2018 talk, a lot of companies came up to us, a lot of community members came up to us, and they said, hey, this is also a pain point for us. How can we help? So we, we had a lot of collaboration within the OCP community that all helped develop the Run BMC specification. We also produced some more reference boards. We have two reference boards here. We have a new Vuitton reference board, and we have an A-Speed reference board. And we also got some traction and made some prototypes. Some of them are actually on demo here in the expo hall. There was a talk about it from Quanta. <clears throat> and so there was a lot of stuff done in 2019. <clears throat> I think maybe now, let's sure. hand these out. These aren't free. <laughs> I need these back. <laughs> So quick review, you know, the high level spec, what is it? Again, the spec defines this interface between BMCs and their hardware platform. So it's really, if you focus on this double arrow and you look at all the IO connectivity that's going over this double arrow, we've standardized that and we believe that we've, you know, our spec right now can cover 95%, 99% of the platforms out there. And it's flexible um, in the spec. We've embraced this idea of multiplexing, either through hardware or software. So if certain interfaces, if you don't use certain interfaces, they typically have a dual function. A good example is I2C can also be typically dual function as GPIOs. So it's very flexible for your platform. So I think the first question that was asked to us after 2018 was, we handed the demo board out just like we did, and the very first question is, how much was that connector? <laughs> so, and it's, it was a board-to-board -board connector, so you're actually paying double, and that led us to doing some optimization on the connectors. So we went from 300 pins to 260 pins. We tried to, we looked at a lot of different connectors that were high volume, one of them is in the consumer market, a DDR4 SODIMM connector. So we landed on a 260-pin DDR4 SODIMM connector. I have the JDEC registration shown here. And we, we said, hey, can we actually fit in this form factor without having to change any of the spec? And the answer is no. Um, so we've relaxed the A height, and we've relaxed that to two heights, 32 millimeters and 50 mil millimeters. And those are important because those can fit vertically in a one RU and a two RU form factor server. But you can also find connectors that are right angles and different type of angles. So you have a lot of flexibility in the placement for these as well. So I wouldn't try to squint too closely at what's happening in this slide because it's available on our spec, but suffice to say that over this interface, you get a lot you get everything you'd pretty much ever need to have a BMC. Uh, we provided your connectivity to the outside world through RGMII or RMII, connectivity to the host with LPC, eSpy, PCI Express, USB, as well as various you know, serial interfaces and GPIOs, ADCs, PWMs, TACs to talk to fans, everything you would ever need, we believe is provided through this, inter this standard interface called the Run BMC interface. Just going back to this connector overview, it was a lot of fun trying to reach consensus with 
five to eight different parties wanting different things. <laughs> but we think we have a good consensus here that would fit a majority of the platform. So we're pretty happy with the signal counts here. So why would you want to use this? Why does this benefit the community? There's a lot of different reasons why. I've listed some of the top things that I think are important. One of them is you get improved security. There's a proliferation of hardware devices and SKUs in a data center, all with different BMCs. I think with some of the latest announcements, Bloomberg reports, whatnot, people are paying more attention to the BMC subsystem. And having a standard BMC reference board and a standard specification, you can lock down your BMC subsystem and you can add some root of trust components to it. You can do, you can focus more on platform attestation. You can have a design that's more stable that rolls at a slower cadence than what it would be connecting to. A supply chain win is pretty obvious. Imagine designing a server and going to the OCP marketplace and picking from two or three BMCs, placing an order for a million of them. That'd be great. Um, it's also, you know, that scenario that I just gave in a data center where you have five or six different hardware types, maybe from two or three different vendors, all with their own, own different BMC software stack, that's difficult to manage. If you had a reference board, you could manage that platform co code a little bit easier. And I also believe that a consistent hardware interface will drive more consistent code. And you also can move to, move to faster to market. You don't have to re redesign your BMC from a hardware perspective. You can also get a jump start on your software development efforts. You can use a bring up vehicle or maybe an older platform to start writing platform specific code to your, to your MPI product. So big thanks to the community here. We had, this isn't even the full list, but big thanks to Hive, Quanta, Nuvaton, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, A-Speed, Twitter. It was a big effort. There's some demos at the Microsoft booth and also the Quanta booth, and I believe there's another um, demo at, going on. I believe at the OCP NIC 3.0 booth, there's doing an experience demo showing this booting and KVM and remote management. Also what? And an open BMC live demo. Excellent. So, from <laughs> so this last slide just has some pointers to our specification that we submitted to the incubation committee. However, there's a caveat there that's not quite ready. We are still working to, since we submitted, some more people came forward and they said, hey, 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 you know, can you clarify this or that? So we're gonna have to resubmit. We're hoping to do that by next month. But the links are here. <coughs> so any questions? We kind of went through this pretty fast. Um, we wanted to leave some time for questions. So if there's any questions, let's go ahead and, and we can take them now. It was to land on a, a standard you know, and cheaper connector. And we looked seriously at the I.O. count and saw that we could probably reasonably bring it down by not exactly 40 pins, because some of those were powers and grounds, but you know, to a reasonable level using pin multiplexing. So it was definitely a trade-off there, but we were able to land on 260 pins on the SODIM connector. Yeah, our first swag at the 300 pin connector had a, had a little bloat there, too. So we, we paid a little bit more consideration to the, the actual pins we were assigning to the connector. Yeah. Go ahead. I just wanted to know, what, how much of your decision, at least with the naming and run uh, BMC, was attributed to run BMC? <laughs> <laughs> You know, originally when we started on this project, we started naming everything OpenBMC because we wanted to work closely on what we were calling a hardware platform for OpenBMC, but it just got a little too confusing since 
you know, there's, there's so much open BMC going on right now. So then we came around, okay, well, like, what are we gonna name it? And I think we saw a comment on when, when open BMC was created, it was like, man, they really missed like the opportunity to call it run BMC. And I told Eric, I was like, we have to do this. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so part of our, it, it's not part of the specification, but we plan to submit a reference board. I think you were talking about the bring up vehicle. So we, we do plan to submit that. Um, we'll submit that when we have our specification approved by the incubation committee. Uh, hopefully next month we'll resubmit. If you're looking for early samples, we can talk offline afterwards. Yeah. You can just take the one that we handed out. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah, back there. So, I guess that's a pretty open-ended question, but I'll kind of speak to what my colleague was talking about as far as hardening a BMC. We see that by modularizing the BMC subsystem, if, if designers wanted, and we know that there is a lot of you know, uh, motivation to do so, to add on extra security, like hardware security onto the module and have a more secure version of the module. Um, I don't think that speaks to the I.O. connectivity in particular, but by adding more security onto the module and hardening against that component, we think that that's a major win of this concept. Yeah, you could also imagine the reference board having anything that's prone to attack, like the BIOS FRU or the BIOS SPY NOR flash, the BMC SPY NOR flash. You could have those, those type of peripherals live on this reference board. And you could have a, you know, a Titan or a Cerebrus type chip that monitors all the traffic going back and forth from the I.O. You could definitely design around the specification. The specification allows you to design a concept like that. Cool. Any further questions? OK. Well, th thank you. Cool. Thanks. Thank you.